Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian. While we're all familiar with the plight that the Second World War incurred on Germany, rarely is its aftermath analyzed in great detail. Today, we will dig deeper into why Germany was ultimately divided into East and West, and how the German people suffered during the first years after the war. Could the post-war division of Germany have been avoided? Discuss this topic and more on our Discord. The first discussion about the post-war future of Germany was held at the Tehran Conference in 1943. The Allies agreed on the occupation, division, and new borders of Germany. But the four zones of occupation were only agreed upon at the Yalta Conference in early 1945. Still, it was the post-war Potsdam Conference that truly set the groundwork for how Germany was going to be divided and occupied. The British, initially, were opposed to occupation, concerned about the costs it could incur on their already strapped finances. They were eventually won over by deep American pockets. Instead of administering and policing Germany side by side, as the Allies did in post-war Austria, the decision was made at Potsdam to divide Germany into four distinct occupation zones, one for each Allied nation. The British were assigned the Northwest Quadrant, the French the Southwest, and the Americans the Southeast. As the Red Army already occupied much of Eastern Germany, the Soviet Union was put in charge of the Northeast Quadrant, which included Berlin. The French also decided to make the rich coal provinces of the Tsarland a protectorate, although this was not recognized by the other major powers. Following its defeat in the Second World War, Germany was stripped of all of the territories it had captured. About a quarter of its old pre-war territory was divvied up between Poland and the Soviet Union. The northern part of East Prussia, the cradle of Prussian militarism, which many blamed for both world wars, was annexed by the Soviets and renamed Kaliningrad Oblast. Meanwhile, the southern part of East Prussia, as well as the rich industrial areas of Silesia and Pomerania, were handed over to the Poles. U.S. and British forces had actually advanced further than they were supposed to according to the Yalta Conference. As a result, they relinquished the territory, and in return the Soviets allowed Berlin to be divided into four sectors. The Allies soon created the Allied Control Council, the governing body of post-war Germany. The Council was supposed to allow each power to exercise authority over their respective zone of occupation, while still cooperating in decisions that affected the whole country. In reality, this was not the case. The French, with aspirations for a dismembered Germany and resentful at their exclusion from the conferences, continually blocked any progress toward re-establishing German governing institutions. Meanwhile, the Soviets were busy dismantling and shipping anything that could be useful to reconstruct their war-torn country. As I'll explain, the economic situation in the zones deteriorated rapidly into mass supply shortages, forcing people to grow their own food, hoard, and steal goods. Today, a similar economic situation, once again fueled by global conflict, is occurring, the effects of which are being felt, fittingly enough, in Germany, where Deutsche Bank is fighting to survive a historic bank run right on the heels of the second biggest bank collapse in US history. And just like post-war Germany, everyday citizens are being impacted. Take the United States, where over half of the people making six figures are currently living paycheck to paycheck. Experts like Goldman Sachs are advising clients to diversify their wealth from stocks and bonds into new alternative assets. Fortunately, platforms that help investors diversify with alternatives perfected their methods long before the bank crisis. In fact, one platform, Masterworks, the sponsor of today's video, turned a profit on every single exit and returned over $25.8 million to their investors last year, even as the economy weakened. Masterworks allows you to invest in iconic art from legends like Picasso and Banksy by breaking the art into shares so you don't need millions of dollars to diversify with the same assets Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates use. Masterworks' last three sales handed back 10, 13, and 35% net to their investors, and new offerings on their site can sell out in hours. Masterworks even has a waitlist, but you can skip the waitlist by using my link in the description below. 
Before the Allies met at Yalta and decided upon the four zones of occupation, another plan was devised by the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Henry Morgenthau. The Morgenthau Plan would have seen Germany entirely demilitarized and divided into three parts, a northern state, a southern state, and a deindustrialized international zone in the west, administered by the United Nations. The intention was to prevent Germany from ever developing a military industry or waging war in the future. Besides support from U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the plan was almost universally disliked and was subsequently scrapped. However, the sentiment of harsh measures and pastoralizing Germany to neutralize it as a threat remained. In addition to rampant Soviet and French industrial dismantlement in their occupation zones, the Allied Control Council also limited industrial and steel production. As a result, Germany was reduced to the meager standard of living it had known at the height of the Great Depression. The economic plight of Germany was further exacerbated by the expulsion of ethnic Germans from eastern territories. These removals remain the largest movement or transfer of any single ethnic population in European history. They occurred in three overlapping phases. First was the organized evacuation of ethnic Germans by the Nazi government in the face of the advancing Red Army. The second was the disorganized fleeing of Germans following the Wehrmacht's defeat. And the third was the more organized expulsion dictated by the Potsdam Agreement. Millions of Germans were expelled from Poland, Czechoslovakia, and Hungary. While many contemporaries argued that these expulsions were necessary to prevent ethnic violence, hundreds of thousands would die on the journey, either by Soviet bullets during the war or by cold, stress, and hunger after it. Furthermore, Germans that remained in territories that later fell under the Soviet Union would be deported to camps in Central Asia and Siberia, where they were used as forced labor. As masses of German expellees arrived to the war-torn remains of Germany, shortages of food, housing, and other goods led to conflicts with the local population. France, which had not participated in the Potsdam Conference and thus argued that they did not have to bear the responsibilities for decisions made during it, refused to accept most expellees into their zone. Soon it became apparent that the economic recovery of Europe could not go forward without the reconstruction of the German industrial base. As a result, in July of 1947, U.S. President Harry S. Truman rescinded the harsh occupation directives on national security grounds and stressed that an orderly, prosperous Europe required the economic contributions of a stable and productive Germany. This sentiment was further compounded by the growing needs to rearm the Germans as a potential ally against the Soviets. The Western Allies were increasingly concerned about the deteriorating economic situation in their zones, with the U.S. Occupation Zone Administrator General Lucius Clay remarking, there is no choice between being a communist on 1,500 calories a day and a believer in democracy on 1,000 calories. As a result, the Marshall Plan was extended to the recently created Buy Zone in 1948, a currency reform which had been prohibited under the previous Morgenthau Occupation Directive introduced the Deutsche Mark. These developments enraged the Soviets who withdrew from the Allied Control Council and ordered the blockade of Berlin. The Allies responded with the Berlin Airlift, which lasted almost a year. Soon after the Berlin blockade started, the French would join their occupation zone with the Buy Zone, establishing a short-lived Tri Zone. Later, on May 23rd of 1949, West Germany would be established, followed by East Germany on October 7th. The division of Germany was an improvised matter. While initially the Allies intended to rule Germany in concert with each other, high tensions and the spark of the Cold War meant that neither side wanted to risk damage to their own interests. In essence, this meant that the Allies abandoned East Germany to the Soviets, where it remained until the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War.